So today we're going to talk about some of the upcoming changes, or rather the changes that have already been implemented in the newest version of Crew AI. Now guys, I've never talked to anybody in the Crew AI team, any of I've never talked to any of their developers, but I somehow feel like they read my mind or maybe they just heard my prayers with some of these changes. So I really just want to go over the ones that I'm most excited about. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on. They're constantly working to improve this framework. There's definitely a lot of competition right now in the AI agent framework space, but I definitely think that Korea is knocking out of the park, both in terms of their community, the fact that it's open source, the fact that there's so many resources and so much documentation to use it. And I'm going to lie, even though I've been considering trying to switch over to different frameworks because some of the headaches that some of these issues cost me i'm pretty happy to see that they're pretty much being addressed on this next version so i'm excited to continue using crew ai and making more projects with this new changes so for the first one making agent delegation more versatile for smaller models my understanding of this from reading the forums and seeing some of the complaints or issues that people have had is that Cray AI isn't the most user-friendly, or rather, it, rather there's instances where the output is kind of like garbage when it comes to using smaller models such as Llama 3 or Mixtro locally. So it definitely seems like they went out of their way to address this because I think a lot of people are trying to leverage using local models instead of just having to rely on API keys, API usage, and you know getting those high costs. The next one, which I'm pretty happy about because it was something that I constantly kept running into was an issue with the callback function. And the issue with this was that basically just like how agents are, it's basically that just like how agents are able to use tools to perform their tasks, there was also an option where you could set up a callback function. That is the agent could call on a function to perform a completely separate task all on its own. And having that in earlier versions of Crew AI definitely added a lot more flexibility to your project. I did notice that in 0.28, some people were having issues with it, myself included. And there was some open tickets for people asking for that fix. One of the workarounds that I saw was that, I mean, now one of the cool things of version 0.28 or the previous one was that you could set up your crew to run in a hierarchical fashion where the task could be delegated from one member to another and also you would have a manager agent but for that version you could only pick the llm that would manage your manager agent with this new update you're actually going to be able to assign an agent to behave as the manager so this one's pretty great too is the ability to set system prompt response templates so that it works more reliably with open source models again such as llama 3. And i think the reason why people were having so many issues when trying to use llama 3 locally and why the performance for it was so much worse than when you used llama 3 on the grok api key is because when the request was being sent from the agents it wasn't being sent with the specific system prompts that the original models were trained on. So I'm sure there's going to be a few more details you are going to have to add to your agent attributes when you write your crew. But for those of you that have been waiting on Llama 3 support in order to get your crew to run efficiently with those smaller models that run on your laptop, it seems like there's going to be a good fix for that. Now on this one, improvements for tool usage. I did notice that sometimes when I ran my crews, if I had multiple tools or even if it, I just had a single tool, depending on the model that I used or depending on the way I was prompting the agent or defining the task, there were instances where the tool wasn't being used or there was a failure whenever the agent tried using the tool. I'm sure I wasn't the only one having these issues. So if this was fixed, that would be great because again, I think the tools are definitely one of the aspects of Korea that make it so useful and so flexible. This one regarding the fix for duplicate token calculator metrics. I'm assuming that this has to do with some of the calculations that were going on in the background in terms of prompt tokens, response tokens, or maybe even the iterations that are being calculated whenever your crew runs, which you are able to set. I don't know that they've added a way to natively track the tokens themselves, but they already have that integration with agent ops, which I think is perfect since agent ops pretty much gives you their own UI interface for that. Now ability to create a directory when saving a file. The previous workaround I would have had for this would be to either create that directory either before the crew started or once the crew ended running. But there was a specific issue that I was discussing with somebody over Discord where it seemed like it would be ideal if we could create this directory during one of the tasks before I finished running the crew. So even though this isn't a very difficult thing to do in Python, I think if they natively add it to the Crew AI library, it's going to be perfect for the people that aren't trying to waste too much time getting too deep into Python or the complexities of the code. Now this issue regarding fixing coworker to coworker issues, my assumption for this, this is just kind of like a guess is that I've seen instances where people say that once the crew starts running, especially if you're doing it in a hierarchical search, they will notice that during some of the iterations, there are times when the agents will come up with a great solution, but instead of going with that, they'll overlook it, do a few more iterations, and end up with an output that is of less quality than one of the iterations that it had previously done. I'm hoping that's what it fixes, but I'm not entirely sure on that. This one's pretty great too. They're adding a couple of tools, including browser base and Exasearch. Exasearch is going to be another search engine option. Browser base is going to be a headless browser. And just to make it clear, all a headless browser is, is a browser that 
program can use. So instead of you pulling up Google Chrome and clicking through things, a headless browser is going to be what Korea uses to navigate the web and pull data. Now this last one for improving JSON and Pydantic output, this is also going to be most beneficial for people that are trying to leverage the capabilities of the smaller models. Because again, having consistent and adequate data outputs is definitely crucial when it comes to integrating Korea with other applications or other services. Let me know in the comments what fixes you're most excited for. Have you heard about this new update? Have you been using it already? Do you just not care at all? Whatever it is, I'd like to know what your take is on this. And if you need help setting up your Korea project, whether it's for a personal project or for your business, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can book a one-on-one -on -one video call with me completely free. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.